Let's watch the man apologize for thrusting into his cousin. Alrighty, so this episode's gonna be a little awkward. Uh, we've got some stuff to discuss. Uh, if I say the name Madison Cawthorn, most of you probably know exactly what we're going to get into. Um, and albeit the conversation is about the people he's been into recently. Uh, so we'll get into that discussion here in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the fan art section. This one is from Artsy OT. Did this Cirrus Bonk animation sketch as part of a belated birthday gift to Cirrus? Artsy, thank you very fucking much. For those who don't know, Artsy uh, also has done other stuff that has been has been showcased on the channel a lot uh, that has been very good animation. So thank you very, very much. Next one we have is from Wind Dragon, uh, Pirate Neko Cirrus. Thank you very much for this one as well. We seem to be blowing up a Trump cruiser. Very awkward. The last one we have is from Lunar Muse Serenity. Uh, they said they needed to fix the head of the original model uh, that they used for that piece of fan art. So we have a re-rendition of that one. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art shown in future videos, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And with that said, I'm going to name the article for a moment and this comes from the daily ray uh, the, the daily mail the name is gop congressman madison cawthorn seen in nude thrusting video those are words luckily this is a censored version so we're i i hope this isn't going to be tos but let's take a look I, uh... Okay, so I... There's a lot of context missing here. Uh, apparently, that is his cousin. Now, for those who don't know, Madison Cawthorn is a Trump-supporting uh, Republican congressman. Uh, he's the guy you normally see in the wheelchair whenever there's a, a big Republican meetup. So, apparently, this is, uh, this is weird. Apparently, it's his cousin. I have not been able to confirm that. Um, I'm not really sure what I watched there, but... I do know that I saw a naked man uh, thrusting at another person uh, after dragging them under bedsheets, uh, and it didn't seem like they wanted that to happen. And uh, I don't think it's the filmer who was the cousin. He's confirmed that it's his cousin. Oh, so he so this is this is Sweet Home Alabama is what happened. Interesting. There is more uh, that needs to be talked about here as well. So Madison Cawthorn has responded. He's responded by saying a new hit on him just dropped years ago. In this video, he was being crass with a friend, trying to be funny. We were acting foolish and joking. That's it. I'm not backing down. I told you there would be a drip drip campaign. Blackmail won't win. Uh, if you know there's going to be a drip drip campaign, I'm assuming it's mostly because you know that there is stuff on you to drip. Or, you know, you were doing more than dripping in this particular episode. Uh, but he did respond to this, though. And I want to go ahead and take a look at the response. There we go. Found it. So he did respond to all this. And I'm going to be honest. I find the response, um, the little bit of it that I watched, I found that way more interesting than anything else here. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick and see what we get. Hey everyone, Madison Cawthorn here. Now, I'm sure that many of you have seen some outlandish stuff the media has been putting out about me over the last few weeks. I've really never seen the Swamp launch such a coordinated attack against any individual in politics except for Donald Trump. And even though we know- We've all, yeah, yes, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, has had similar happen to her. Um, deservedly so, but you know. The fake news lies about fighters in Congress, like me. I'm sure that many of you still have questions that are reasonable. 
You know, why are they attacking me? Do any of the allegations have merit? How do you explain some of it? Now, the normal political doctrine is to ride out the storm. Advisors have told me that, Madison, you have such a large lead in the polls. You're the incumbent. Don't worry about this kind of stuff. But I was ele elected exactly for the reason that I fight back. I won't just roll over and bend the knee. I don't want to waste my time fighting the fake news media and every single narrative they put out, but I feel that I am honor bound to dispel some of their lies. He's honor bound because he was shown nakedly thrusting into uh, another man. They, he's, I feel like some of this honor boundedness is uh, more towards his own side than ours. Most leftists probably don't give a shit. I mean, the cousin part's kind of awkward, but most leftists probably don't give a shit, right? There's not really... If he is actually gay or bi or pan, who cares? Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and go on. I'm going to do it quickly, point by point. Here we go. Uh, so, first article we have up is from the Washington Post. Now, this is an article that is alleging, and really it's spreading a lie that an ex-staffer told about me, and it was recorded coordinating with a Democratic super PAC that I have closed congressional offices. Nothing could be further from the truth. We have as many offices as possible with our congressional budget. We have the f we were really the first freshman to have all five offices up and running on day one. In just days, U.S. Congressman-elect Madison Cawthorn will get sworn in as the youngest serving representative in the nation. He'll also move into a newly renovated office in his hometown of Hendersonville. So far, we've solved over 1,800 cases. We've answered over 11,000 constituent inquir inquiries and passed three pieces of legislation in the minority. And really, that's unheard of in the House. Here's one from Politico. Let me look for it. Oh, yeah. Here's one from Politico. Before and you now, get in, before you get into that one, the claim that he has closed per, uh, congressional offices, are we not sure that different definitions of this are being used? 100% this is his own side uh, mud jobbing for him since he's uh, based on this. Uh, fair. But I'm curious if different definitions are being used here. That would be, uh, honestly, the right doesn't care about cousin fucking, look at, see Rudy Giuliani. Ugh. What does that have to do with him being a perv? Yeah, I don't know. He would be responding to things. Um, I don't know what this has to do with that, with any of that, but. So they're also trying to discredit J.D. Vance, too. The right is eating itself. And I hope so. Let's continue. The headline reads, Rep. Madison Cawthorn, exclusive photos. And this article is pushing a ludicrous narrative that I'm some kind of drag queen on the side, aside from being a congressman. And really, this is just poor journalism. And I'm not surprised. It is political, after all. Not exactly the same journalistic standards as Fox or Newsmax. Really? Interesting. Give it, let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. Let's do a quick... A quick... Check here, uh, left center bias, okay. Uh, a little bias, but it's fine. Uh, we have a high rate of factual reporting. Um, hmm, I wonder, uh, Madison Cawthorn, do we do we have, uh, maybe, uh, just maybe, uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Fox News. See what, see what, see what we got over here. See what's, see what's going on over on Fox. Oh, oh, oh. An almost extreme right-wing bias in the United States with a mixed rate of factual reporting. Man, that is... Mm. What about Newsmax? What about Newsmax? Oh, even further to the extreme. And it's even labeled as a questionable source. Oh, man. Mm. Those really super duper incredibly high journalistic standards of fox news the organization that legally is not labeled a news organization it's news entertainment uh that whose most popular branded individual uh cannot actually be taken seriously legally uh this is something that has been determined in a court of law because of tucker carlson and his ludicrous shit uh, but don't mind me i'm just Madison Cawthorn here talking about the, the truth of the matter and the, the real, the real things, you know. This is what we call speaking to your base. He knows that his voter base largely will watch stuff like that. Hell, I know people in my local area that only watch One American News Network. 
Madison is the type of person who knows that these people consume exclusively right-wing news sources as opposed to what you should be doing, which is gathering your information from a series of reputable news sources, not just one side or the other. So instead, we have Madison telling his voter base, ah, no, this one, you know, definitely, you could expect them not to say the truth about things because um, they're not Fox, you know, them good old boys over at Fox News. Technically correct that they have different standards. Ha, ah, yes, the best kind of correct. You're curious on One American News Network's credibility? Oh, I can tell you it's bullshit. They've actually paid their journalists to lie. It's actually fucking bullshit. And really, with about five minutes of investigation, they could have found that this was taken well before I was in Congress, and even before I was running for Congress. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares if it was taken before or after. Nobody cares. But ask yourself this. Have you ever taken a dumb photo on vacation? Most people have. The media thinks that playing a goofy game on a cruise ship with my friends and family means that I can't serve in Congress. That is garbage. My mother was literally- I don't think anybody is saying that you can't. I think most people are saying that it takes certain stances you've made that are homophobic and transphobic uh, into question when you're willing to dress and drag. In fact, actually, you guys can tell me uh, how you feel about this in the first place. It's entirely up to you. But, you know, we, we do have Madison Cawthorn in drag as a thing he's done. Funny show or not, it's not media spin to say that you've done this. You're right here doing exactly that. He looks better in drag than an IRL. I know, right? I'm straight as a board and I do not find him attractive, but he certainly wears it well. Raziel Foss just really? Fuck you. Jesus Christ. None of you should be allowed to wield this kind of power. Uh, that's it. I'm adding another zero to every single redeem. Thank you for redeeming 50,001 channel points for a bucking. Oh, well, oh, well. Anyway, so yeah, it's a thing you've done. It's not a thing I care about. It's not even a bad thing. Hell, you fucking rocked the outfit. But it says something more about who his voter base is that he has to defend himself, not by going, well, there was nothing wrong with what I did, but by going, well, what I did was uh, categorically in a different sense, in a way that it would be considered uh, more acceptable. Uh, unlike those um um transes who um um uh, they are not acceptable when they do it because it's not for the um funnies when they do it. When when they do it, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, 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 a thing that they have to do, uh, because sometimes dysphoria, sometimes euphoria, uh, but I wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, Ma I, I'm Madison Cawthorn and I approve this message. So what's the context? Uh, uh, according to him, the context is he was on a cruise playing a game. Do you think I would do that in front of my mom? My mom's a conservative and she knows I'm a cat girl on the fucking internet. It, it's it's fine, dude. Literally zero people actually care. Zero people you should be concerned with care. In that crowd, and if you think I'd do something inappropriate in front of my mom, you clearly don't know what a Southern mom is like. And honestly, I was told that I look pretty good in these pictures, and I think there should be, should be some bipartisan agreement on that. Uh, now, next. We at least he's right about that one, but also, I am a Southern mom. Haha, -ha, look at me. It, again, this is speaking to your voter base. We've got one from ABC News 13. And the headline reads, group accuses Rep Cawthorn of misconduct. I love how they say a group is making this accusation as if there's some form of a benevolent organization just watching out for the good of man because they're such good stand-up people. Actually, no, it's, it's literally just saying it on neutral grounds. That when you say a group says this, the, it is probably the most content neutral statement you can make about a group. Now, it fails to mention that the group's name is literally the Fire Madison Cawthorn Political Action Committee. So, of course, with a name like that, their attacks are obviously not politically motivated. Of course not. You do things politically motivated all the time. That is not a strike against anything. There are plenty of actions that are politically motivated that are still completely legitimate or illegitimate, irrespective of their political motivations. Madison, that is not a point in favor of anything. But, of course, the publication fails to make that clear. Uh, now, over here, let's see, when we've gotten so many of these ridiculous uh, hit wait, these mailers from wait, my- Wait, uh, wait, 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 you didn't- Wait a minute, Madison! 
You brought the article up and you just said, but the name of the organization is this, so overturned. Wait a minute, is this the... Are these the standards of evidence that people on your side of the political aisle consider consider enough? It, that's literally just ad hominem. That said nothing about the substance of the claim. All you did was just say, this is the name of the organization, and then walk away from it. I don't give a fuck what the name of the organization is. I could care about the organization's history of reputable things they've done, uh, but I don't necessarily have that here. You literally just say, here's the name of it, and then you walk off. The conservatives love theater more than facts. Yeah, Ble bless Maddie's heart. Can we, can we get a collective? Bless his heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, Maddie. I'm not sure which ones this one's from, but this one reads that uh, I have one, I have a desire to cut Social Security spending, veterans benefits, and defense spending by 33%. Now, there evidence of this? Well, in my new contract with America, which is a 53-point plan to save the nation, I state that I want to cut wasteful and useless government spending by one-third. By the way, I got that idea from President Reagan's Grace Commission. So my question to the why does it mat? Oh, that's why it matters. So, okay, we have an appeal to authority fallacy here as well. When Madison goes, by the way, <clears throat> I got that from Ronald Reagan. Didn't you hear? I said the names. Reagan. Ronald Reagan. You're supposed to get horny when I say that. Ronald Reagan. I don't. I don't care where you got the idea from. You could have had the idea during a fucking wet dream. Oh, you're talking about Ronald Reagan. Of course it happened during a wet dream. But you could have the idea during a wet, a non-Ronald Reagan related wet dream. And I, I wouldn't give a shit. I don't care where you got it from. If it's a good idea, it's a good idea. Um, but when you say, I'm planning on cutting useless services out. Maddie, do you realize that that's incredibly vague and what you and I consider useless services uh, are very, very different things. There is no objective value that says something is or is not useless when it comes to government. It all comes down to people's individual political values as to whether or not they'll make that particular value judgment. Author and the candidate of this attack mailer is why when I say that I want to cut, cut wasteful and useless government spending in order to save us from our debt, you instantly assume I'm talking about veterans, social security, and defense. Do you believe that those are wasteful areas? I'm just curious, and I'm sure there's a lot of voters in Western North Carolina that'd like to have an answer to that. It doesn't matter if we consider that, Maddie. What matters is if you consider them wasteful. If you consider those things wasteful has nothing to do with us, has everything to do with you. Falling back on projection doesn't actually help. Uh, now here next, now honestly, this one, uh, this is just pretty good reporting. There's, there's not a lot of uh, narrative to defeat here or, or misrepresentation, but. He hasn't defeated any of the narratives that have been shown up. He's literally engaged in some of the most obvious textbook logical fallacies in order to debunk these things. This one was an actual mistake. You know, I've been pulled over for speeding. Uh, my mentality inside the beltway of Washington, D.C. has always been all gas, no brakes. But I just can't have that same mentality when I'm back home here on I-26 here in town. Uh, so, lesson learned. I'll slow down on the road, but I won't be slowing down on working to fix Congress. Uh, moving on, also in this article, you, know, you all know that I love and defend the Second Amendment. As a man in a wheelchair who faces death threats, Okay. I know the only way I can stand a chance in a life-threatening situation, situation is with a gun. I wish we didn't live in a fallen and sinful world. I just got a vi oh my god, he just fell into- oh no, 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 no. I'll have to rewind back for that a little bit. Um, but is it bad that I just got the, uh, the thought in my head of a Madison who forgot to use his locks for his wheel and, uh, fired a gun and then just, like, shot backwards? Is it- is it bad that my brain went there? Like, that's horrible, but I also feel like it would be comically funny. But let's go ahead and, and get with his actual point instead of thinking of Tom and Jerry style antics. I wish we didn't live in a fallen and sinful world, but unfortunately we do. I carry a weapon, a weapon almost all the time. I carry a weapon almost all the time because the, the because Adam and Eve uh, fucked it up for all of us, everybody. I, I too enjoy appealing to fairy tales as my uh, political position. Obviously though, I made a mistake. I forgot to disarm before I went through a TSA checkpoint, and that's my bad, and I have to own that one. 
Uh, now, this the here over here is another mailer, and this one's basically just as dumb as the last one. The mailer says that I want to make your daily lives more expensive, and that I want to make your daily lives more expensive because of my new tax plan, which is just factually incorrect. My plan is to get rid of the federal income tax because the government has no right to the profits of your labor that they themselves did not participate in. We have words for systems like that. Uh, right here, this one. His word would be communist uh, or socialist, but also getting rid of federal income tax, that's your plan? Getting rid of the federal income tax. Do you know how many pieces of infrastructure would fall and fail without that funding? I'm not saying the government always uses that funding correctly, but we can literally go, yes, taxation is theft, but it is also, like many evils, a necessary evil. Just like we can say, yes, abortion is premeditated murder, but like with some evils, it's a necessary evil. Or like we can say, about the United States military and the countless people it's killed. We can do things like say, this thing you think we need is a necessary evil instead of venerating it as the best thing in the world. It is a possible thing to do. This one's next and this is from a group that I've never heard of called the Ancestry. Uh, and it really, this is a headline of just a childish video that my cousin and I made. And my friends, I want to- Okay, so it is his cousin. So it is his cousin. Really stress something. You are witnessing one of the first examples of a politician who grew up with a cell phone in their hand, with the ability to take photos, videos, and have others use that content as a way to hurt you. Most of my colleagues in Congress right now would not be serving in Washington if they grew up within a single mile of a cell phone growing up. Okay. That means they have done enough objectionable things that have been caught on video, and you just admitted it. Oh no, that's not the message you were trying to get across. Mmm. Childish things like grunting wildly and mounting his face naked. That wasn't grunting, that was fucking chanting. Grunting is what Tom Hanks does in Home Improvement. <laughs> what he did was, I feel as though you could, you could dispel a panda demon from turning red with that. Asriel, Hi uh, Asriel Raven, thank you very much for reading your points, friend. Oh, well, oh. As someone who is the same age as him, I have done nothing of the sort, nor had anything incriminating uh, be recorded on cell phone. Salem, is that a, is that an admittance? I'm kidding. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, Tim Allen, not Tom Hanks. Why did I say Tom Hanks? What am I, kill me? I've lost my 90s child card. Asriel Raven. Why? <laughs> Fine. Asriel has dropped a new ook. Let's carry on. Let's watch the man apologize for thrusting into his cousin. Now, this video is just stupid locker room talk between two cousins that grew up like brothers, taken long before I served in Congress. And my cousin Steven that they're attacking is my ADA. He's family and he's my best friend. The article published in the tabloid, The Daily Mail, didn't even bother to fact check any of this or send the video to my office before they ran this with misinformation. The media lies. It shouldn't surprise any of us. Uh, right here, this is an article published out of New York, and this one is. So it wasn't locker room talk, though. You were you were naked thrusting into the face of another dude. That's not locker room talk. That's you thrusting into somebody's face with your penis. That's that's the furthest thing from law. Is that what you do in locker rooms, Cawthorn? Do you just go up to random people and thrust your penis in their face? Oh my God, that's, oh, mm. I just figured out why they don't want uh, trans people in locker rooms. If Madison thinks that that's what locker room talk is and there's a trans woman in a woman's locker room, does he just automatically think that penis thrusting in face is what's gonna happen? Not random people, sirs. It's family. Well, it's random people in the locker room, I assume. But now I'm just imagining the Fast and Furious memes. The only thing strong enough to ruin Madison Cawthorn's career? Family. Katini, thank you for redeeming your points for what's being converted into it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Said it's still family, sir. It's the South. There are no random people. Everyone's family. Family is really just pushing an allegation that I have been involved in insider trading. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is another example of reporting where the facts simply don't matter to the left. 
a quick search would have revealed that the information that I had insider knowledge of was publicly available on Instagram. Now, make no mistake, I believe in decentralized cryptocurrency as a way to remove centralized government control of our finances. Even a quick glance at the story reveals how shallow their claims really are. Look at that, he's even a crypto bro. Western North Carolinians know I'm fighting for them in Washington, D.C. And that's why I can't wait to get past this primary on May 17th. We're gonna defeat the rhinos and the establishment cronies that are trying to beat me and unite the Republican Party so that we can defeat the real enemy, the Democrats in November. We have to take our country back. I call Washington, D.C. elites out on their bullcrap. I expose the corruption that goes on in Washington and they hate me for it. That is why I'm under attack right now. Uh, it's a, literally, he's just taking all of the pages out of Trump's book. It's the exact same ones that Trump said every single time. Also, the tape itself, the end of it says, video, Madison Cawthorn's leaked tapes, cocaine and orgy claims, encounters with cops calling Zelensky a thug, and lingerie photos have put his future in the spotlight, but will voters stick by him after he claimed it's just a blackmail plot? And then that's just this, all this. Jesus Christ. Oi, oi, oi. Again, I don't... It's weird to me the ways he has to walk this stuff back. It's awkward. Silver J, thank you for redeeming your points that have been converted into an... Oh, woo. Oh, woo. That's about all we've got where this one is concerned. Because right now, what we have is a 26-year-old North Carolina lawmaker who has an incredibly tough primary ahead of him because of his own fault. These are all self-created reasons. And he says he's like leading in the polls a lot, but by what margin? I'm not 100% certain. He's not really fighting for us. I saw his sign with the Hitler mustache spray painted on it. That's fucking funny. I want to actually look at the article itself. Figure it's worth at least a little bit of a look. Uh, see here. The North Carolina lawmaker has racked up a lengthy rap sheet of scandals after denying multiple sexual assault allegations against him during the first campaign, while also facing a tough re-election bid that's, uh, that's been opposed by members of his own party. He invoked the ire of his party earlier this year when he claimed to have been invited to cocaine-fueled orgies with senior colleagues, even sparking a public rebuke uh, by health, uh, health leader... House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. Since then, an apparent sex tape, improper relations with a staffer, and multiple run-ins with the law enforcement uh, are in just a few of the headlines that the 26-year-old lawmaker has dealt with in the last few months of his first term in pro uh, Congress. Cawthorn dismissed the slew of bombshells as a coordinated drip campaign in a blackmail plot to prevent him from keeping his seat in November's midterms. Voters head to the polls on May 17th uh, for an eight-way GOP primary race in the deep red 11th congressional district. And despite clinching marquee GOP endorsements like those of Donald Trump and the National Rifle Association, recent polls show that mounting scandals could be taking a toll on his race. Veteran GOP strategist Douglas Hayes told Daily mail that Cawthorn has a tough primary and for self-created reasons. Asked about if any other, uh, any particular scandal would trip his campaign up the most, he replied, it's all of it. And those all speak to different audiences. However, he noted that he, sh uh, that should Cawthorn win the primary, he's likely to sail to victory given Republicans dominance in the district. And he does enjoy a double digit lead over his top rival right now. Okay, so he is still leading very well. The short video clip appears to show the North Carolina Republican simulating a sex act with another person and was circulated on Twitter Wednesday night. The clip features a seemingly naked uh, Cawthorn shrieking and grunting as he thrusts against an unknown man's face. Another person, presumably who is recording, can be heard telling Cawthorn to stick it in his face. Fire Madison Cawthorn, uh, President David Wheeler said in a statement that the video was passed to us by a former supporter without naming who it was. Cawthorn responded by calling calling it a new hit. And then, of course, we got the tweet from him that he posted earlier. We've got this lovely photo of him doing the uh, thrust of Boogaloo. x staffer says Cawthorn ran an alcohol-filled office overrun with pets in leaked audio. I mean, I'm okay with the pets. I don't care about the pets. There's a crotch-grabbing video that spurs an ethics investigation into his relationship with his cousin and all kinds of shit. Again, it's not stuff that matters all that much, but it's stuff that matters a lot to Republicans. Yeah, overrun with pets is not a downside to me. He's also blackmailed by Russia with his fake bribe, uh, bride too. 
I wasn't aware he had a fake bride. That one I'll put in the allegedly category because I, I don't have confirmation. But yeah, that's a bit of an awkward situation to deal with. And I think it's really, it's more telling. And I wanted to focus more on the way he responds to controversies. Instead of responding to them by actually swatting down the allegations, he uses known logical fallacies to defend himself in every single way. And honestly, that speaks more to me than anything, at least in this uh, little, little brief investigation. That said, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below, because I'm sure there's a lot that I am missing here. Uh, with that said, however, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I don't know that you could, but if you did, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow my Patreon. That's a thing you could do. And as always, everybody, insert into video tagline here.